Um, so today I am so right. lucky to have on the podcast uh, Ari. Um, and I don't want to butcher your last name because I definitely will trying to pronounce it. Just go ahead, try. <laughs> see, see if you can do it. Okay. Um, let's see if I can even find the... Hershkowitz. Hershkowitz, yeah. Hershkowitz. Yeah. Okay. Ari Hershkowitz. And um, just to give you a bit of a background of what we're going to be talking today. First of all, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. I'm visiting uh, Vancouver because we have an event um, tonight with uh, Matt Delahunty and Douglas Murray. I look forward to attending that. Yeah, uh, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. Um, uh, are you familiar with Matt Delahunty? I've met him a couple yeah. months ago here in New York. Great. Yeah. Um, it, oh, th that must have been for the uh, Sam Harris event. Yeah. Yeah. And you were you were here for that event. Yeah. 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 What did you think? I heard some new ideas that I hadn't heard before, and some mm -hmm. new uh, ways of thinking, and I liked that a lot. Great. Um, so, one of us is a 2017 documentary featuring a uh, film that chronicles the lives of three ex. Hasidic, is that right? Hasidic. Hasidic Jews from Brooklyn. Uh, the film was directed by those who brought us Jesus Camp, which I'm sure all of our listeners are familiar with. That was the um, movie with the psychotic, batshit, crazy lady. Um, what is her name? Um, her name escapes me right now, but those of you who... Uh, saw the movie um, documentary Jesus Camp uh, will know what I'm talking about um, and that's uh, so the, the creators uh, Heidi Ewing and Rachel Grady um, created this new docu documentary One of Us and I have to say I, um, I was very affected by the documentary I finished watching it last night and um, this just further fuels my charge and want to get out there and more quickly eradicate uh, so much of the anti-science that causes so much pain and abuse to people. Right. And and you, and without harming the people who are uh, practicing that because they're the ones who are affected by it most. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, it's so easy when we hear stories of uh, even sexual abuse coming from the pulpit or from, you know, your community or ex-community. Um, it's so easy to go to anger and want to strike those people down and go after them. Um, but I do feel a sense of, you know, I feel sorry for people who were indoctrinated into belief systems that didn't it it didn't really set them up very well right and and you know just like you like i wanted to go back kind of as far as we can go in your history uh and just kind of move through step by step and see if we can identify some of the um key points of reflection in your life and and obviously at some points you'll you'll have been much too young um but i thought we should start with so you're you're born you're born onto the gurney and are you genitally mutilated that's the first question okay uh yes yeah I am circumcised and what's your what's your uh, j just generally what are your thoughts on that like do, do you feel like um, is this a, is this a big issue for you or is it something you've reconciled well I never really was not circumcised so I don't really know what <laughs> if it would be a difference for me but in general there's some people claiming science on both ends if it's uh, 
better for you know in, in terms of health or not and whatever um, I can't say anything about that because I'm not a doctor I'll leave that up to the actual professionals but the way it's done I have I have a lot to say about and without being too graphic it's uh, it's not being done in a hospital by a doctor uh, in a sterilized uh, environment so how feel free to be graphic how how is it being done like can your viewers handle it yeah you bet all right so the i'll make it as short as possible um most of the foreskin is cut off the rest is bitten off and then some of the blood is sucked out with the mouth uh by someone called a moyhel which is a it's someone who's done it a lot but has no license for it um i think that that, like without going to the whole ceremony yeah, and, and right, which right. is which is uh, traditional and I'm totally okay with just that part doing that to an eight day old kid is so it starts or, or to anyone yeah or to or, right so it starts with the cutting or the yeah. or the snipping and then it moves to the biting I'm not sure which which one is first the biting or the sucking out the blood but right both of those happen. And when you reflect on that now, um, obviously, like your views of that, ha have your views of that uh, um, ritual, I guess I would call it, um, Do you, can you point to a time or, or remember when you were thinking about that and, and you thought, yeah, yeah, this makes a lot of sense to me? And I don't think it ever made sense to me, but I remember defending it. Um, when uh, I think it was Mayor Bloomberg who tried to ban that practice, that particular practice, and um, there was a whole storm and they managed to win it. I don't know if it was in the courts or PR, whatever it was, they, they won and they can continue doing it. Um, that's when, um, well, just growing up, I only had access to the local newspapers, the Hasidic ones, and you know, only Hasidic music, and basically it was everything was in-house. Like, everything was... You only heard what we wanted you to hear. So all I read was those papers, and uh, they explained it, that uh, it's like this attack on God and this attack on Judaism that, uh, you know, they want to... Um, it's, it's not about the actual practice, the reason they want to ban it. It's just, it's just a, it's against God and Judaism. So, so I remember hearing some defenses for it, but... Um, I don't know. It's also something we don't really talk about. Like the kids don't really talk about it. And when I was an adult, I was uh, halfway out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, kids have a hard time dealing with, in general, dealing with hard situations anyways. It's the, the wiring isn't quite there yet. And, and trying to understand something as brutal and graphic as that is just... And, and it really, I mean, it, it really is a testament, these type of things, you know, biting an eight-day-year-old's penis. and It's for God, though, so you can't really say that it's wrong because that's what God wants, and right. God is never wrong. So, And this is a problem I... I so when, when people always ask me, they say, well, what's the danger of believing in God? And then I, I always ask them to define God and... and Typically, I would say probably, man, it has to be 98% of the time, the, this God they're describing would be an all-knowing God and, and the absolute authority on morality. So, so the problem is, is that when we have this imaginary being and the fact that human beings can hallucinate and use that imagination further in this fantasy. You know, one day during, you know, mild psychosis, they might hear a message from God to go and chop off the head of their neighbor. And and he, and and the way God puts it in their imagination is that, you know, you, you have to do this because this person needs to be with me in heaven and you can get them there. So um so please uh so please go and carry this out, and, and you will have done God's will. Yeah, that I think probably has happened before over the course of history. Oh, yes. yeah. 
and a lot of killings have been done in the name of God. But even without that, even without the hypotheticals that keep on happening, I mean, just look at what, look at what, I mean, just circumcision, like we just talked about, just that, and uh, ostracism and so many other things that are happening in the name of God. So, yeah, just believing in God can be very dangerous. I agree. Yeah, so so things weren't off to a good start for you, <laughs> even at day eight. Yeah, yeah, no. It's it, it, This is not the way to start a child into the world. And, I mean, this is demonstrable. The uh, you, you, were, you were bringing up some... Um, you mentioned that it's kind of a, there are some, you know, scientific facts on either side of the equation as far as what's, what's healthiest and what's not when it comes to circumcision. And this is actually, this is a myth I'm, I'm, I'm trying to extinguish in that, um, any reputable scientist of any kind that is, that has looked into the circumcision issue will see that, 80% 80% of the world is uncut for males. And um, this doesn't lead to more disease or, or more issues when it comes to cleanliness or, or anything like that. It's, um, it actually, in, in the West for a while, it seemed like kind of the norm for a doctor to say, oh, uh, circumcision or not. To, to parents and and they would say well one way the, the doctor would even give the advice well one way or another it doesn't really matter and then the parents would you know make their decision and thinking that they were making a morally sound decision either way um so it's in the west a lot of parents uh made the decision to circumcise their children in, in what i call this state of being in a uh, immoral pleasure drift in that they they drifted into the immoral, but they were led there by bad advice um, from from doctors because, the, you know, they were convinced probably as well that it wasn't a big deal and it wasn't this huge, you know, uh, uh, ritual of abuse. Right. And does Christianity say something about circumcision? Um, yeah, I mean... I. From from my understanding with Christianity is that uh, when it comes to circumcision is that there there is a, this uh, covenant um, with God. So I, I'm not sure I'm not sure that circumcision is is this this major thing in New Testament belief. But uh, I think in any kind of uh, Christian sect that still holds the the Old Testament true to heart. Then I think they would believe in that in that covenant of cutting. But this all started. Uh, I mean, we go back as far as uh, the Egyptian um, dynasty. I don't even know if that's the right word to describe them. Um, but they. Uh, but it started as a fashion trend in in priests, and that's a pretty. <laughs> they. I don't know what it was about the Egyptians, but they like cutting shit off their body and 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 uh, doing shit to their body. It's kind of crazy <laughs> but uh, maybe they were just bored not enough playstations and xboxes around they didn't have fidget spinners yes that that's the thing like if maybe if they had fidget spinners we wouldn't have this like uh, brutally evolved strange thing of essentially putting your mouth on a baby's dick when they're born and you know sucking the blood it's yeah i mean i've i have endless amounts of media that come in through all of my social media networks. And, uh, a lot of the time I'm sent these videos of this, um, uh, ritual being performed. And I just, it, it is one of those things that it's just so obviously immoral and, and, but again, it's what God would want. Right. It's not on us to question that. Right. And is there like a, a particular, is there a particular doctrine that, that, outlines that this is the right way to perform this circumcision i don't think so i think it, it, the the way how to do it exactly developed over time i'm not sure exactly where where it's written 
um i never studied it you know because right when i actually did study judaic studies i was uh not an adult um but by now they they know exactly how they're going to do it and, and so on but i'm not sure where where it's coming from i think it evolved i think it's it's very it was very smart of those uh, people who wrote the new testament to leave that out i think that would turn away some people that's how they you know they they nitpick what they like no like circumcision i don't think people will be so up to that so we're just gonna skip that and god doesn't want that anymore god changed god had a change of heart yeah that's (laughs) that's uh when you read some books and you're just like it's like out of nowhere there's a there's a death scene or this insane rape scene in like a a children's story or something of that would maybe be deemed appropriate for children it's it's just like you have to be if if you are going to take the old testament into consideration when forming your you know whatever world view you have to edit that book yeah. uh exodus 21 sanctions slavery it tells you uh how long you can or, or how much you can beat a slave it uh it gives you between a jewish slave and a non-jewish slave also right exactly and it uh it yeah it gives you these um these crystal clear uh guidelines on which to follow if you're going to keep a slave and this isn't abolished at all in the new testament by jesus jesus says in in the new testament that he's here to fulfill the laws of the prophets and and you know not a uh he says a tittle or a wink or something like that of the um of the uh old law will be abolished so i mean it it gets full endorsement by jesus and then this introduction of of eternal torture comes into play yeah and, and slavery is totally cool right god is okay with that but you can't eat bacon yeah that's a big no that would be very very bad you can totally have a slave you can beat him up to a certain point but you can't have no shrimp either Mm -hmm. very important to remember yeah and so did you um i mean so let's move to say your your early teens what was it like being in uh in your early teens kind of coming into puberty and and like that whole aspect of living in a very um sheltered environment i was uh it's tough being a teenager um even more so when you can't look up online certain things that you're afraid to ask your parents Mm -hmm. um well i think i think a lot of people had the internet is not that old yet but i didn't have really who to ask anything um so i was i was a troubled kid as they as they call it um always the a bit the i guess the odd one out um i'm not blaming like uh my my leaving or uh the community or becoming an atheist i'm not blaming any i'm not blaming the bullying or anything for that um that was a realization but it was it was it was my teenage years were definitely an eye opener for me and uh and uh and um i guess it it got me to ask some questions that otherwise I wouldn't have asked because you can't ask those and and uh you just wait till you die and you can ask out right and uh and as you were going through those those stages if you had a question about let's just say for example if you had a question to your parents about masturbation would you have would you have been able to talk to them about that or was this a was this a term um that wasn't even in your vocabulary well it wasn't that term i think they they uh i'm not sure what uh what did they call it uh I guess the Hebrew version of wasting seed or something. Oh, okay. Um, but no, I could never ask them anything about that. I'm not supposed to. It, it's just a no. There's no like leeway. There's not. There's there's no question here. It's just no. 
we did hear a lot from our teachers and principals in school um, about what would happen if we do masturbate. Um, I don't remember which religious book it's from. I'll find it and send you a copy of that yes. particular part. Um, it was something like the devil will hang one by their penis and like barbecue them. Like that's uh, it's very specific. What's what's waiting for me out there yeah, or uh, down there? There's so much directed towards the penis. What it is just it with seems. guys in the penis? <laughs> well, I mean, it's obviously this, you know, the the net amount of pleasure you can get out of your penis is probably why there's so much, you know, focus on it through these through these doctrines. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. It's got that's where God put her focus at. <laughs> yeah. Um it's also so the feet, I think. I was uh, in Oklahoma uh, for the American Atheist Convention. Right. And uh, um, Faisal C. Damatar was there, and and we 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 talked about this. Like every religion has something to say about feet. How you tie your shoes, which is in Judaism, uh, which foot goes through the door first. I think in Islam and just very important things, which uh, leg to wash first. And we came to the realization that God has a foot fetish. Yeah. I mean, it's all the evidence points towards that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, and it's okay. It's 2018. Yeah. It's totally okay. It's just, yeah. it's just there's no reason, the reason to hide it anymore because no. that just causes more pain and suffering. No. God might as well step out of the closet and just come out and tell us what his fetishes are. And I mean... I mean, from all the gods I've read, he seems to have a fetish with human blood and sacrifice, and he, he likes all that stuff too, or or she. Um, and uh, what kind of movies was God watching as a young kid? I'm wondering. And, exactly. And did God have access to video games? I think they would still. I think if if the God character still, if he was to come out right now, they would still blame the Matrix for all of his downfalls the movie oh when oh. everyone when all these uh, i mean when the columbine shooting happened when um a lot of these school shootings uh the religious community was always pointing towards the pop culture things as the the causing factors towards these shootings rather than looking within their own system and seeing what kind of uh monsters um mentally they were creating in these uh, communities by um oppressing you know so many just natural things about what it means to be human i think that doesn't contradict itself it could be both movies video games and religious um indoctrination the way that would work is that god watched a lot of these horror movies as a child and played a lot of these video games and then now it's, it really is the word of God. But you have to go back and see where did God develop that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. It's a, I mean, so if you believe in an omnipotent God, he's essentially played every video game, watched every movie. Even if those things haven't occurred yet in time as we recognize it, he already knows what what those things are and and all the details because he created it so you know god is highly influenced by arts and culture yeah <laughs> so yeah and and again like so it's really a sad story yeah you know, just a, a young child god <laughs> being turned in the wrong direction yeah and it's it's just sad yeah. rather than uh you know anger provoking yeah, it's the story of, you know, all the other gods that had their shit together and were able to create cosmo exactly. uh, create universes where there wasn't, uh, you know, brain cancer in children. The, the, there was this kind of, I guess, a reject god where they they kind of pushed him aside and, and bullied him. And, and that god was like, I'll show you. And then he created this this universe with all this death and suffering and uh, and, and a very small amount of life in one little tiny corner of the, of the cosmos. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to experiment with some 
really weird shit and all of it's gonna have that'll to show you do with dicks yeah then that'll show you and you're gonna do weird things to penises uh so okay so now we should talk about um abuse what what is your when you when you reflect back on um on the abuse you've incurred what what is the most hurtful thing about all of that uh the response after i asked for help um i i completely understand that something like that will happen in every community the psychopaths do exist and it, I don't think any law or any <clears throat> anything is ever going to stop that. There's always going to be psychopaths. Um, but what I think is changeable and hasn't changed yet. I mean, they've started to do some change, but there's there's a long way of improvement uh, ahead. Hopefully, um, what could be changed is the sane adults uh, changing the response. To you know, what happens when a kid comes home and is very confused and says something happened, not really sure what it is, and and uh, you know w what's going on, is crying at night, and uh, what do you say to that kid? Do you do you get them a therapist and tell them it's not their fault, or do you say I don't think that happened? Um, that doesn't make sense because that rabbi, that teacher is a very honorable guy, so don't make up stories like that. Right. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's just brutal, and and I think, you know, one thing that this idea that one Jew can't hand another Jew to authorities, yeah. it that seems to be the poison at the center of uh, not wanting to deal with the the huge rigmarole that will come out of, you know, outing outing another Jew to the authorities. Yeah what so i mean so you're asking you've told uh you've told you know someone about this abuse the reaction is that way what is the next possible step for you to i mean do you just close this do you just close these experiences away and 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 not deal with them uh, like all, all of us do with trauma um, or do you, or do you just, you know, are there other, um, are there other anchors that you relied on to, to deal with this? Well, besides the bottling it up and forgetting about it and, and also one way I dealt with it was trying to go a little outside of the community and see what else is out there, asking questions from people. It's really what, uh, uh, what got me to ask questions because how can this ever happen, right? Um, another thing was self-harm and um, it helped but of course did a lot more damage yeah in the long run but yeah that's how I dealt with it but mostly it was just bottling it up and and it was there were a couple incidences and not all of them I told my parents and teachers but after a few times being uh, shut down and, and you know clearly seeing that they th they think I'm lying even though there was one instance in which my dad kind of not really saw it, but was pretty clear. He was sure about what happened. It happened in the basement of a shul where we prayed every Saturday. And without going into too many details, uh, my dad was looking for me after the prayers. Um, I came up from the basement and it was clear that something had happened. And this guy was walking right behind me. And I, my dad's a smart guy. He, he got the picture. And uh, he even yelled at the guy and in a way, like hinting that, like, I know what you did, but past that, no, I didn't get a therapist or I honestly don't know what happened to that guy. I am not aware of anything yeah. uh, like of any charges pressed or anything like that. So how how did you find yourself down in, in the basement with this person? I'll make the story short uh, because it's uh, it brings back uh, yeah, yeah. flashbacks. But uh, I was playing with his son, and uh, he came over and said that um, 
it was either I broke his son's belt or oh or it was my belt that hit his son right and he had to take that away from me that was like the start of it so well and my father wasn't there and I was a little kid you know how how can I really argue against that yeah and your and your father while this is going on is upstairs praying yeah praying oh man I'm sure that some people who were in the shul that day would remember the time my father yelled at that guy. But that's as far as it went. And in all honesty, when I was that age, I, I didn't even realize what had happened other than WTF. Like, yeah. what is this guy up to? Um, right. And um, so I, it's, I, I needed a therapist for myself more than that guy being yelled at. Yeah. I also, now that I'm an adult, I would have loved to look back and see that guy has been in prison for eight years now or right. nine years now. That would have been, uh, that would have been nice. Yeah. And do you, do you have, do you have these, um, do you still have uh, some passion in wanting to pursue any kind of legal action towards those that have wronged you and abused you? Yes, but uh, I'm also a very realistic person, and I know what what happens to people right. when they try to pursue such a thing, and um, I know that I it's 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 a tiny percentage of a chance that I'll ever uh, get to get any of them uh, uh, bring them to justice. So I'm a realistic person. I'm working another angle. Yeah, that I have that I'll I'll uh when it's ready and they can't stop me right. um they'll know about it but I am working another angle not yeah. not not a not a like taking justice into my own yeah, yeah it's more you know bringing it out to the public type of thing yeah and uh, and I mean it's important and I will uh you know I want to support you in in doing that and you can lean on me as far as uh any kind of support you need um Thank you. Legally or or whatever to to do whatever you need to do because, you know, I just can't say enough like how tragic, like even just that one, you know, episode with, with you in the basement and your father upstairs. It's just that whole how something like that can happen to a kid is just I, 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 I look at you know various different world views around the planet and and i just i don't see that uh if if you're if you're if you're following a, a true kind of humanist approach to the world i don't think there is room for things like that to happen and right i i, I just think uh s i just think modes of um of psychosis in a humanistic worldview they don't take you down to the genitals right. i just i just i i i think there is a connection between religions having this obsession with what you do with your genitals and putting all this focus on the genitals through different rituals and and uh and different teachings about sex and and i just think there's this thing about religions that really boils up you know pedophilia and and um you know, pedophilic tendencies and i don't and and i just urge people to not let their their religious beliefs take them down a road where all of a sudden you you're doing things that you feel are wrong but you're doing them anyway in order to please some kind of imaginary being. It's like that that moral system that comes out and and stands in contradiction in your mind to to what this teaching or doctrine is telling you to do. This is a this is a good tool that's evolved in us. Um, our ability to to do 
to 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 reason these situations so um that's my uh that's my note on that i guess if uh, god ever tells you to do anything get a second opinion because uh just looking at what god has done i mean if you believe of course just according to your beliefs what god has done well, i don't think any of your listeners are believers but if there are any um probably some people from the community will listen to this mm -hmm. if you god ever tells you anything get a second opinion because um don't think god knows what they're doing yeah and i mean one thing i would point out is is i mean so many so many god believers believe that they have the one true god and all the other gods were fake Um, but I, but I would apply. Uh, you know, hopefully, you can at least apply the same amount of requirements for evidence to all gods across the board, and you'll see that that you know, in a metaphoric sense, like people like Jordan Peterson would would talk about um, your your God um, may be true in a metaphoric sense, but that's that's not the kind of truth we talk about when we're talking about existence of gods right um this is so so please just apply that that same um burden of proof to all this all the gods equally and then you'll see that yours um doesn't you know exist more than than any other gods or santa clauses or leprechauns or, um It's the flying spaghetti monster, however, yeah. does exist. Yeah, in in a in a metaphoric sense, the flying spaghetti monster uh, monster does exist, and that's that's you know the real fucked up thing about you know believe, believing in a metaphoric god and following these these crazy doctrines is that okay, you realize that sure we've created this you know metaphoric truth realm that okay anything can exist if you if you call existence that. Um, but that, that doesn't justify what, what, you know, if you, if you commit these horrible actions in the reality that we're all experiencing, you know, it's not going to justify if you point at this metaphoric truth thing and say, well, I did it for that. It, it just, if that thing actually existed and you had good reasons to carry out, you know, these actions, then you might actually be reasonably justified. Uh, in doing these things, but you can't be reasonably justified in in performing these weird rituals for an imaginary god. It just is. It doesn't make any sense. And and Pascal's wager doesn't even apply if if the god doesn't exist. So. And it's it's not just what they do in the name of that uh, mythical notion. It's the. It, They they put that at, as a priority before so many other things that should have been a priority, like friends, family, moral values, uh, the right thing, you know. Um, like, for example, you can't hand in another Jew to the authorities. But when that Jew did something really bad, yeah. well, you should have uh, done something about it. But, well, it's not what God would want. So yeah. you you're putting the myth before an actual thing that just happened that needs processing. Yeah. Do you still have a relationship with your father? Yeah, it's 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 decent. Yeah. Um it's not where I want it to be, but it's um yeah, it's a lot better than most of my friends have it, so I, I'm not yeah. I'm not complaining. Have you have you ever talked to him about that instance? Once. Yeah. Um and I've actually never shared this before. Right. So exclusive <laughs> um in rehab uh they which by the way i just want to say uh, like my parents were really really helpful um in in getting me out of addiction and i have uh roughly uh a year and six weeks about um i'll have to look it up a clean of all substances now and uh, congrats thank you yeah. it's uh their credit in a big part so when my parents came to visit me in rehab um, well, I never really like share the details of those incidences, uh, but I did share it with my therapist after I got sunburned and the uh, nurse looked at my back and, and saw these scars and the nurse said, you have to stop scratching your back. I know it's itching, it's a sunburn, but you have to stop. 
I said, those are, that's, that's an old thing. That's don't, don't worry about that. Uh, she took a picture, showed it to my therapist and, and my therapist just said, do not, you know, call me into her office and said, do not leave in this room until I know what, what those scars are. Long story short, uh, not long later, um, we had, uh, what is it like family weekend or whatever it was. And my parents were there. Um, one of the tech staff took my mom for a tour of the facility because she wouldn't be able to handle that. And uh, I told my dad in details everything. And uh, he gave a very vague, like, well, it's not like we can do anything about it now. So, like, he was like, let's let's move out. Let's, like, move on to the, the stuff we had to discuss that was, like, on the agenda. Because that's not something we can, wh- wh- what can we possibly do now? Yeah, I mean, I'm not blaming him though. Yeah, I'm blaming yeah. the indoctrination that he got. Yes, I I understand, and I mean, I think it's okay to be angry at that virus that infects those um, those who are, have been indoctrinated to say something so um, cold blooded, cold blooded, and and right. insensitive. It. Uh, I mean, the obvious thing to do, I mean, in your situation that you're explaining, it seems like you essentially have a partial eyewitness to to what occurred. And I mean, it, it's like, why, like, why wouldn't the response be to you know, to go after this person or, and to, and to get some justice for you. You know, that's, that's my, my reaction to that is, is let's build a case and, and go after them. That's, that's the way I feel like, you know, I want to take arms up with you and, and, and fight the moral fight and hopefully gain a moral victory. Um, and, and, you know, I understand that from your father's perspective, it's like, I, I assume he's still tied in with the community. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's like he's doing the one Jew can't hand another Jew to the authorities. And that is trumping his ability to act morally. Yeah. So like I said, it, it's, it's putting God before friends, family and moral values and and all of those important things which i would put it as a priority priority you can have god in your life meaning it it, you know i I would have god in my life if it was a nice game you know you go and pray as long as you know that it's not actually something and it's a game like a video game or something else it's culture you know yeah as long as it's culture and tradition um and of course you don't put it before the important stuff yeah. So if your God interferes with moral values, then maybe your God's got a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, every God I've read has some serious problems and they happen to coincide with the problems that the ancient people who supposedly found these scriptures uh, or, or they were divinely inspired, um, they seem to have the same problems understanding simple moral values as the gods of that time and you can see how that changes over time like the new testament like not saying as much about we're not saying anything at all i'm not sure about circumcision because by then some people grew up and they 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 saw that okay maybe maybe that's not what god would want so let's just go ahead and give that a quick give me the white out yeah let's just let's just uh let's just fix it up uh, yeah. quickly and uh how are we going to sell this to people who can think a little better than the people it was like a business deal <laughs> you have to you have to we have to meet in the middle on the percentages here yeah. in order for both of us to go to go out of this happy yeah and fu- and funnily enough we have this explosion of slavery in in the west um even after things like the old testament uh, are kind of reformed. Um, we still have these uh, severely immoral situations that happen, even when the religions have tried to evolve. 
uh, or, or because the religions evolved and and like grew stronger evolved in a different way besides evolving into a more approachable smiley way right. it also evolved into becoming a lot bigger and bigger over time yeah and and you can c clearly see a correlation i mean religion has killed I, i'm not sure if that's true i have heard this and maybe you you've studied this uh re religion has killed more people than all the wars combined like all of recorded religious killings and all the recorded war killings i'm not sure if that's true yeah but it kind of makes sense because uh, for a lot of uh you know there were periods uh, in, in time where okay so islam now kills christians and then christians kill islam and and, 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 and jews you know muslims and jews and um kind of makes sense yeah it's it's interesting to think like i the Penguin philosophy is let art and science inspire. I think um, uh, in order to live uh, the most fruitful life that one could live, you need to have a solid foundation in science and art. And I wonder if that philosophy was kind of adopted by early man. I wonder if this would have resulted in, rather than religious wars, if uh, if it would have been more like, you know, Da Vinci creates this amazing piece of art and there's a war over whose art is best. Like, would we have resulted to um, the same level of, of, of um, brutality and, and barbarism if, if there wouldn't, if there wouldn't have been religion and, and we were more fighting over whose painting was best? Right. I don't think at a sip and paint one Friday night you can. I I I don't think that has ever turned into a uh, into a you know, ten million people killed. I don't right. think so. Yeah, and uh, we I, could have had the atomic bomb a lot sooner though. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> that, we also would have true. had electricity, and we would have had a lot, you know, a lot of other things sooner. Yeah, we waste, and I I talk about this all the time, so I'm a bit of a broken record, but. But we waste so much of our intellectual real estate, which I think we have a limited amount of that. But we we waste so much of it on anti scientific pursuits with our mind and and just uh, you know believing and giving money and resources to bullshit. And we do so much of that um, with our resources. It's unbelievable how much money we waste on on. Uh, on just bogus ideas where whereas in the in the scientific community the bogus ideas are weeded out very quickly yeah. um, because we actually re rely on evidence to to you know show us uh is it, there's a step one what step in fact two. is going on <laughs> there's a step one step two step one can you prove it step two does it make sense there's a you yeah. go through a list of things and yeah and uh, and the and the reason why it's such a you know it's a perfect system is because it actually benefits from the people who want to quote unquote destroy your model uh, they they want to falsify uh, they want to prove your model wrong and that's essentially what we're trying to do when someone brings a hypothesis forward we're trying to prove that hypothesis wrong and then in the end we the, the equation makes sense and we can't prove it wrong and it, it it's adopted as the best acting model to, uh, that that's based on the evidence of reality and the good thing about this is if new information comes along yeah we're not afraid to say okay well we were wrong and we got some new information yeah. unlike you know I, I saw someone wrote once like the difference between a, like a priest or and a scientist what would get a priest to what would get a scientist to believe in God evidence what would get a priest to not believing God, nothing. Yeah. Even with evidence. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously it, it gets into this strange realm of we, we always have to make sure we understand who has the burden of proof when it comes to, you know, proving what they're saying. And it's, uh, uh a, a very it's a amateur times. You can't prove God doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A very amateur approach to any conversation like that is, is when you say, Oh, can you, 
proof that the God that you just claimed exists actually exists, and then they'll say you, you can't prove that it doesn't exist. Well, you know, like I say all the time, if you're holding on to some kind of belief, apply it, apply what you're saying across the board. You have to apply it to Santa Claus. You have to apply it to leprechauns. You have to apply it to the flying spaghetti monster. You have to apply it to any metaphor that I can right. uh, think up. Um, so, and this is why we, we created logic and we created reason and science so that we could weed out the bullshit from the real stuff. Right. Uh, it's just so that we're not walking around just thinking that, you know, a gargoyle is going to fly down from the sky and rip our head off. Like the, the, the likeliness of that happening, regardless of what your imagination is telling you. Yeah. Um, the likeliness of that happening is essentially zero. Believing in something uh, has never and can can never actually change reality. So just because you strongly believe in it and you actually feel it and God really helps you find parking, it still doesn't change the reality. And a good way of countering the you can't prove it doesn't exist is uh, I think I saw that on Reddit is I think it's Mike the magic God eating penguin. Have you heard of Mike? I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for those who don't know, um, Mike is a magic God eating penguin. And anytime a God exists, Mike automatically eats that God uh, by definition, because Mike is the magic God right. eating penguin. So if you God, even if you God does exist, um, he's been eaten. He's been eaten by Mike. So either you can prove that Mike doesn't exist and you or either you can prove that uh, either you can't prove that Mike doesn't exist and Mike already ate you god because if you can't disprove it then it exists or you can prove that mike doesn't exist and the same proof applies to your god man there's got to be t-shirts with with the penguin eating god i like it I, I like it um yeah it's it's uh it's crazy how we're still struggling you know, f finding our way through these. One stuff. quick thing that I wanted to add: if any animal was gonna eat a gat, it's gonna be the penguin, because because they have wings but they can't fly. It's like it's like <laughs> it's just such a tease. It is. And it's like if it's on anyone to eat a gat, it would totally be the penguin. Yeah, the penguin. What what other? Uh, you know, male praying mantises have it pretty bad too. I think the female, I, yeah, they don't start eating. So, so right after the male, uh, I think it's as the male is impregnating the female, she starts to eat him, eat his head, or something. It's something really. I'm gonna have to. I'll add that as a a point to the next podcast to actually get the information together. But there's something fucked up about right after the male impregnates the female, she like eats him as a snack and then <laughs> not in a good way <laughs> no yeah it's not like oh eat me baby it's no fucking eating them like biting the foreskin off of a baby's dick i know that's a horrible horrible thing to relate that to but it's you know sometimes we have to make light and and humor out of some of these situations that are just impossible to comprehend at least from my worldview um there's some in the documentary i should mention there's some there's some major uh, abuse that um that occurs to uh remind me what the um the uh the woman who's in the film at you yeah, Atty, uh, her, and she's got seven children, right? Yeah. Seven children, and she's in this relationship where she's being forced to have mandatory sex. Yeah, Friday night. Friday night mandatory sex, which is, that is just... It's like straight that, up rape. Let's yeah, call it what it is. That makes me That makes me sick to think that, like, and, and this isn't the same as you know how a couple 
who they might just not be finding time to have sex and they, they set a date to say, okay, let's put in the effort and try let's to have sex. Let's put it on sex. the calendar for Friday yeah, night. Yeah, let's put it on the calendar for Friday night and we're going to do our best, you know, uh, to work towards that and we're going to save some energy. We're going to buy some Red Bull and then we're going to, you know, bump it out. But um, no, this is this is a society... That's 100% dictated by what the man wants, right? Yeah, it's pretty clear that, um, well, without going very like specific into it, at this um, uh, story, because, uh, you know, I'll let her speak for herself and yeah, I don't want to get anything wrong. Um, but just in general, in the community, it's, it's, yeah, it's uh, the the females are second class. Like my mother is uh, somewhere in her forties and does not have a driver's license. If she were to get a driver's license, my siblings would get uh, kicked out of school. They would get kicked out my, of school. Wow. Yes. So Saudi Arabia has female drivers, and Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York does not. Yeah. In the Hasidic community, of course, is what I'm talking about. No, it's not. It's not a legal thing, but. So do you think the in your research of cultures or you know different religions around the world um is Hasidic Jew culture the most arch- archaic uh I'm not sure what that word means okay oh the most um the most English like is not ancient, my first language yeah yeah like the most ancient in practice like um do you think because it's like do you, do you think it's um, it's less with modern times than any other belief system that you've come across? I'm not sure. Um, I know that Islam has some... I know we're not supposed to say anything bad about Islam, but um, I know that Islam... I, I've spoken to um, some ex-Muslims, um, some of my friends, and uh, they have some pretty messed up things. So I can't I can't compare it, but I think it's the it's the general religion thing that is that ancient has never grown up uh, part of it. Yeah, yeah, and I and I look uh, when I'm looking at um, some of the ancient cultures that are still around. It, kind of the the older they get, the the least amount of women's rights there are. It seems like there's that correlation. And that the closer we move to an evolved religion that's changed over time, uh, we start seeing more freedom for women. Be- because if religion, the whole thing about the religion is to never change anything because that's what God would want, you, your your values and all of those things, you take them from 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago. You can't change anything in your life. If your life is like 3,000 years ago, then yeah then you don't think women's rights is uh, something important. Yeah, and and I mean, funnily enough, in the societies where women are kind of most free, I mean, religion's essentially dead. Yeah. I mean, I, I've... And, and I say that, like, you know, free of indoctrination. There's still, you know, in the United States, there's still a significant amount of God-believing Christians. Um, but you know, these are all people who've been indoctrinated into this religion. I don't see Christianity in the West or any other religion for that matter, really bringing in a lot of new blood outside of the people that they've indoctrinated from a young age. Right. And I think this is, this is a great sign, um, because naturally a lot of those new kids, who are being born into you know our modern culture um luckily we have things like the internet that are going to inform them um uh, on what is actually going on on this planet but you know like how you had to grow up you didn't have access to the internet for the longest time yeah i i got in the internet a lot later than everyone else yeah <laughs> So what was that like? What what were the things you wanted to look at right away? Anything that I like seen uh, anywhere, like simple things, like 
you know, I keep saying the same thing um, when people ask me this question, like Elvis and tacos, you know, things that everybody knows about. Yeah. So it, it wasn't, I wasn't looking up complicated things. I just wanted to know really what are tacos because I see an ad for that. Yeah. So you didn't like, you didn't run to the computer and, and feverishly write out tits or ass or <laughs> no porn. <laughs> I feel like that would have been my... The, maybe had that I had an internet uh, <laughs> a couple of years before, maybe that's what would have happened. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I did have uh, not access. I wasn't given access. I took access to a computer um, in someone's office that um, I used to print out Wikipedia pages, and I would bring that to Yeshiva, which is the uh, religious school where we, by the way, learn nothing of value other than Judaic studies um, which is, it's my focus um, right now and what I'm trying to work on um, so yeah I printed out Wikipedia pages and had like a red marker like a highlighter with me and anything that I didn't understand or wanted to look up uh, I marked that and then went back searched that try to find out what it means and printed out those pages and um, that's that's how I that's where I got my education from. Yeah, and and I mean, you obviously like there was no talk of evolutionary theory. Oh no, no, no! I I googled. I mean, I searched there on Wikipedia. Uh, I have the the Big Bang theory, like all of those things that I looked up, and I was it was mind blown that some people actually try to make sense of this instead of having this one three character word. That is a one size fits all answer for any question that ever existed. Yeah, it, I can't even comprehend what that would have been like to be kind of locked away from from reality and from science in that way. It's it, it just must have been like the world was black and white until you kind of came out to kind of see what was really going on. Yeah, and that was it was mind blowing. It was. I can't even like you, you saw how excited I was to talk about Wikipedia and like <laughs> some people like, most people like, they grow up with it and they know about it and it's like not a big deal yeah I'll just look it up on Wikipedia for me when I found it it was so amazing mm -hmm. it was it's this extreme like wealth of information that I was that's exactly what I was looking for forever right and that that was really exciting yeah so you you've you seem like you have this natural um w need to to pursue what there is to know about reality yeah i'm um, a very rational logical person right so do you think that helped you out of this religious indoctrination in terms of leaving physically or in my head uh, realizing say, uh, yeah i would say both well in my head really it started with uh, questioning and first asking the people around me because they're they're supposed to have all the answers and uh and uh, they didn't have much got yelled at for asking questions uh, some people were like i don't know but asked the main rabbi like asked the, the the grand rabbi like like basically sending it higher above and basically no one had a clear answer and some people were just like we don't we don't ask that questions we just we just do and that didn't, that, that didn't sound right with me right like you should do because you know you have a reason to, not because God. <laughs> <laughs> when you're looking for a long explanation, you just sustain the uh, in yeah uh, for as long as you want. That's why it's, it's, it's a one size yeah. fits all answer for anything. In terms of physically, um, like getting out and leaving. Also, my my it's not realism like my, my rational thinking right. got me through it so right. uh i really started at gamestop um to to, to get um internet access because some of these um um computers they had there right that was uh, quite a few years ago with the computers they had there they to play games they had uh, a browser and i just i was just there all day so it started with um, trying to figure out a way. Well, they don't let me have internet access, so what can I do? You know, and just going going around it. 
until I eventually got a phone and then there was a, a long couple of years of me having a phone, my father searching my room and my pockets and right. taking it away and and uh, and then just basically gone and gone in circles with that. Yeah. Did you uh, did you suffer um, any uh, any kind of um, physical abuse uh, outside of the sexual abuse stuff growing up? Like, was that is it is it typical for parents to kind of um, beat their children if they're ins- insubordinate? Well, yes and no. So beating the children, personally, I didn't. I didn't have any of that. My my parents are very loving and very, very good people. Unfortunately, they have been indoctrinated. But as as human beings, they're lovely people. So I didn't get a lot of that. The little bit of the little of that that I did get, uh, I totally deserved. <laughs> I mm. was a pretty messed up fella as yeah. a young kid. Um, so I'm not blaming them. Um, forever doing that so why um, it, it, you've mentioned a few but times in school though yeah yeah in, in school though it was it was pretty bad and i think now it's gotten a lot better in the schools with that um but and i think it was a lot worse before i started going to schools there but when i was there it was still there was still no no exactly like don't hit kids right yeah um so what I was going to say is that um, you you've a few times have said that you were a messed up kid. Um, you know, just just there you said that you know you were deserving of you know some some abuse or some you know discipline. Discipline, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think hitting is an is at all the right thing, but. I just think that, like a lot of parents, even in any community, they they, they didn't they didn't see another way. I guess right, right. It was pretty bad, but it was never it was never it was never horrible. And and I, I think that's because my my parents are lovely people. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure what's going on in other families. Just yeah, personally, my parents are yeah, uh, as great as someone who's indoctrinated can get. Right. Um. So why so so what makes you say that you you were a troubled you know essentially a, a fucked up kid what makes you say say that you were you were troubled um I was bullied a lot and uh I had severe anger issues they were extremely bad um How did those sh- show their face your anger issues me hitting other kids yeah pretty bad um usually just causing trouble in school also just like it, it, it's a Hasidic thing I think because I don't think it happens anywhere else but just lighting uh, like a plate with anything on fire in the staircase in school and walking away um that, that was not just me that's that's kind of a an often it was an often uh occurrence when in, a, I was, in an all boys school yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's it just happens and people it's it's kind of like they're used to it they're they know how to deal with that by now hmm. um but i was also it was also a mental illness that was um well a few things i was misdiagnosed b- with bipolar yeah and i was in the wrong meds for six years mm. um and at the same time not being treated for the right things for six years uh, yeah i was in that's the wrong a meds long, for six years that's a long time to be on the wrong medication well there was a few years of trials and yep, different yep. things and and then six years of the wrong medication yeah well wow. it was only until i started getting second opinions that 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 changed and a doctor told me actually no you you were never bipolar in the first place wow and the other uh mental illnesses that were not treated and even unintentionally made worse like i have misophonia which is a sound-related disorder. Without going too much too much into details, it's certain sounds just trigger me into an instant rage. Oh, okay. Where you're three feet away, I can't yeah. like hit you without <laughs> getting up. Don't worry about yeah. it. There's actually an invisible uh, barrier here. We have a plexiglass here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'll try not to make and, one of those sounds. And and it's it they yeah, i don't think they have an explanation for why it happens or or any cure or treatment and it just happens suck it up deal with it right but when i was younger i asked my my siblings at the table to eat it 
you know, just chew with their mouth closed, for example. Mm -hmm. Because chewing is a really big uh, um, trigger. And my mom thought I was just trying to boss everyone around. So she told everyone to un like purposely chew with their mouth open and chew loud. And that was, uh, yeah, that that hurt me pretty bad as a kid. Mm. So it, it was, it was um, the misdiagnosed, mis you know, treated for wrong mental illness, meds that I didn't need, and then the mental illnesses that were not treated at all. Yeah. That. Uh, so here's uh, here's my interpretation of what you just told me. So you were, I mean, you were circumcised at eight days. You You go through abuse. You go through sexual abuse. You're put on the wrong meds for six years after a trial with probably a bunch of other yeah, drugs. I've been through them all. If anyone needs advice on meds, just hit me up. Yeah, well, we'll talk later. <laughs> um, but so you go through all this, and then y you say, but you were a troubled kid. But, I mean... You you seem to have had some anger issues, but this uh, what you're telling me doesn't doesn't seem to me to be that 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 you were really much trouble at all. Like, were you getting arrested? Were you? No, but I sh should have been. Yeah, I've caused a significant amount of fires in the schools and mm -hmm. just. Uh, trouble like that but, it, but i guess what i meant by trouble was that it was more internally right like i wasn't this happy kid waking up in the morning and going to school well, i don't were, think any you kid were on the happy. wrong fucking meds <laughs> you were you were probably not even dreaming wrong meds wrong place uh wrong set of rules and so i wasn't like a happy kid yeah. and I, I don't think any I don't think most kids are happy to go to school. Yeah. Um, but even you know, after coming home, I wasn't I wasn't this this uh, yeah. this happy kid. Right. So <clears throat> I hope that you don't think that your your anger um, at all justified any um, mistreatment of you. Because I don't anymore. That's, that's but I did. That's great. Yeah, because I know you know any anyone I've spoken to that um, has ex has been abused or, or has experienced abuse in any form. Um, I know that's often a, a huge hurdle to get over. And I, um, you know, I just. You you had every this was a boiling pot of of so much um, to be angry about, and it's like uh, you being angry was just a necessary byproduct of what was happening to you, and that I I would say you know it it's hard to believe that you've survived. To where you are now it's uh it's i mean it's a i think it's a testament to how strong the human mind can be and and at withstanding even some of the strongest forms of indoctrination abuse uh and just all right wrongdoing right all you got to do is focus on logical thinking rational thinking and seeing past the 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 big um cover up or not cover like seeing past the, the the what's blocking your view yeah are you um are you gonna go after your abusers like i said earlier um legally uh i'm I, i'm not most likely probably not i can't be sure i know yeah. that i have until i'm 23 and i'm 21 now yeah um but legally, I probably won't pursue anything. But I am working on putting together every piece of evidence that I can find, um, like notes that I wrote yeah. when I was a kid, um, names that I remember, people that I'm talking to about it, 
and I mean as much as I can. I was yeah. I was young, and even if there were any cameras there, like there's no way I'm gonna get access to that. So I'm right. putting together whatever I can, and I hope at the very least to to come out with my story in details right. one day. And are are any of your abusers still practicing? And and I looked up a few of them. The summer camp incident was more than one person. And a, a while later, um, I, I, I looked him up. And, and even I think it was uh, about a year ago, I looked him up. And one was still working at a school, working with kids. One was not. And, right. Um, uh, like they, they, the guy from the, the story that I told you earlier, I, mm-hmm. I honestly don't know what ever happened to him. Like right. I, I haven't seen him since, like, since basically then since my dad right. like saw him and honestly not sure um but no they were never like nothing was ever done i actually see one of them quite often uh through a commitment that i have and um i told him a while ago um i i still hate you you know but uh i play nice because of the circumstances of where we meet. Right. Well, I don't exactly meet him, but we both go to a certain place. When you when you say that to him, what do you interpret his his internal reaction to be? Well, he didn't he didn't show much. Right. It, it, I I can really like read it. Um I hope he had a mini heart attack. Yeah. Do you, uh, uh, for someone like that, um, you know, if you were to hear that they, uh, they had died, um, w- would that be a positive thing for you or, or would it be like you're, you're pretty neutral to something like that? Well, I know that if I say it in the public that I would be happy if they died and, and something ever happens to them, I'd be the obvious blame. Right. Um, right. so I'll say it this way. Yes, I I will be happy if they die, but I'm I, I'm not gonna do it, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I want my life, and I want it outside of prison. Yeah, yeah. And just to be clear, that's why I framed the question like I did, and not that. Are you planning on killing these people? <laughs> no. So no, but I am planning on coming out uh, as soon as I have like the whole timeline and everything like right. nicely mapped out, and I'm working on it in my free time, so it's not like I. It's going to be anytime soon, but I, I am planning on coming up with the exact details and names and everything. Right. So, what does your what does your future like for you look like for you? What do you what do you want to do with your life? College to make up for all the of all the education that I didn't get, which is infuriating on its own, and and the way really they keep the indoctrination. So, college and well, travel also. I, yeah. Here and there, I do. I'm going to be in Australia in uh, a little over a month. Very um, cool. Yeah, I'm going to be speaking there at a uh, couple of places and uh, uh, Lumud Oz, Yom Lumud Pathways, which is the Australian version of Footsteps. Yep. Um, they do. Um, footsteps is. Uh, you uh, listeners are probably not um, familiar. Yeah, it, fill us in. Yeah, it's the organization that uh, um, helps people basically choose their own path in life, uh, whether it's r- uh, religious or not. If you come from a religious indoctrination, and uh, you're having trouble leaving that. Uh, that's what they're here for. Uh, basically, yeah. They're, they're, I think that their their like slogan is "Your life, your journey, your choice," something like that. Right. I'm not sure. Um, so Pathways is the Australian footsteps. Uh, just like there are different organizations in every uh, place where there's Hasidic communities and ultra orthodox. So I'm gonna. Uh, be helping them out a little and so yeah i'm going to be doing a lot of tra- a lot more traveling and um just seeing what's out there getting familiar with more cu- with more cultures and um, taking in everything that i missed yeah well i i wish you all the best in that um and like i said uh, reach out anytime you need any help um because i i truly believe in in uh pursuing moral justice uh, for people who've been through uh, abuse like you have so reach out uh, anytime man you know how to get old of me so yeah yeah and, and uh, i just wanted to yeah, add go ahead uh since sir uh, looks like we're um 
Yeah. Time is just time. Um, I guess uh, a sort of message to other people who, um, because a lot of people reach out to me and, and say that similar things happen to them. And um, there's a lot, quite often there's suicidal thoughts involved in the processing of it and, and all of that. And I just wanted to say that, um, first of all, you're not alone. Uh, this happens to uh, unfortunately happens to happen to a lot of people and happens and it's not you're not the only one and uh there's a way to get past it uh i got past it it took a lot of you know self-harm addiction rehab hypnosis and a bunch of things but there definitely is a way to see yourself on the other end and if you uh and if you need help with that please don't hesitate to reach out on social media or, or anywhere yeah yeah i uh, couldn't agree more just reach out and and understand that um you know there there are a lot of people out there that do actively want to help and uh yeah i'm one of those people and it sounds like ari is too and there definitely is a way to get to the other side of it uh people have done it so i know that it looks like there isn't but there definitely is and from 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 the from the point where I'm standing, it's clearly visible. So just uh, j- reach out for help. All right. Well, on that note, Ari, thank you so much for coming on the podcast um, today. Uh, everyone, thank you for tuning in and let art and science inspire. Thank you. <laughs>